This episode of Zenko and Terror was more interesting in my opinion because you got to find out the character Shabaiski and the fact that he was the first detective, A. Subiski, he was part of the first division and he was the eighth detective, much like L in my opinion because it's giving me like Death Note vibe of 9 and 12 this time around, also two people instead of one and how Shabaiski can match up to their wits and they're basically 9 and 12 are going to do another bombing episode near a shrine this time around and they gave them the clue what's the building next to the house of the god who solved the riddle and basically said search yourself until your feet become lame. So basically they had to link it back to Oedipus, the original case he did since Oedipus was the one who solved the case in episode 2 and then they had to figure out what the lame feet meant it was like it was like this whole multiple different gods they had to use and I can prove that 9 and 12 are definitely smart. They aren't average kids of course the ones who can maintain a bomb and like make bombs different episodes like different like they're not made the proper kids and we also got to find out a little about the school they went to the fact that it was basically a place where they didn't really care for anyone they said like you know a name is given to like someone you love like a name is gift of love and that like, you're not loved and like you know we, we need to exterminate you so basically they told them when they were really young that you have no use to you're basically gonna die and we see that 9 and 12 was definitely solving a jigsaw puzzle a lot faster than the normal kids was showing that their intelligence was higher than the average child and obviously they saw that the uh, not 12 was having a little regret of the fact that you know he lost his friends he lost all his friends and everybody else and nine was just there to calm him down and say it's okay that happened back in the past and also shabaski's past and also how he was able to figure out also how the police department was able to figure out that the man named miyagami i believe and the fact that he didn't exist so i'm gonna assume it was those guys basically kind of a fake name and they were able to erase the name afterwards so basically miyagami never existed so that's how they're able to go to the nuclear plant or I'm not thinking it's them and it's thinking someone else they were working for previously because this is the beauty about the show. I can come with so many different theories and some of them could be extremely wrong or some of them could be close to the right. Also, Lisa really wasn't, she really didn't play a big role in this episode, she ran away from home. I believe that's what I'm thinking she do because she packed her bags and she ran away from home. So I was like, oh, that's going to cause I felt bad because her mother's so overprotective. God damn, you need to watch the episode how many times she calls her a day, like maybe 10 times a day. I don't know why, maybe it's something about her past. I hope to find out about an episode dedicated to Lisa because she seems like a character I would love to explore and Duffy hopefully be involved in this case somehow if she's going to with the police department she's gonna side with 9 and 12 since he said if you don't do anything i'm gonna kill you since at the beginning of the episode like the end of last episode basically 12 said that you know if you do something wrong like if you do make one false move i'm going to kill you so that was the really interesting part as well and that was the whole thing like of shibaski trying to solve it and when he got the riddle also like his friend like his other friend whatever and was playing a game and also he links everything together everything in his daily life he was able to link it as well and also find out one scene of shibaski that was really really vital to this case was the fact of his past because why he's here is really interesting on the fact that it was also part two to a suiciding back in the past and the reason he kept trying to solve it solve it, he's he couldn't believe that was a suicide he believed it was a conspiracy theory and then he, he worked himself so much to the point where they had to put him in the archives as late, like make him shut in the archives because he was too obsessed with that case he could have been a friend a comrade maybe but when we're not 100 sure hopefully all these questions i have right now will be answered in future episodes because this anime is going to be like i believe it's going to be like 12 or 11 episodes i don't want to be so short that's my only complain to some animes it's so short that some questions will always be unanswered i don't mind if an anime has two or three seasons to answer these questions because then i won't feel like there's something missing from the show if you know what i mean right so basically that is the episode it's a pretty like it's not like a super detailed episode where i can explain every significant detail the shibaski's past explained the arrival 9 and 12's arrival also 9 and 12's past Shabaskis, everybody else at the police departments, why he's here, and how in fact Lisa ran away from home. I want to know what she's going to go with. Hopefully, she goes with 9 and 12 just because, like, you know, the purpose of being fulfilling her role eventually. So, that's basically the episode review. If you guys did enjoy the episode review, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter if you do so inclined. And I'm done here. Farewell. Sakaikara